Welcome to the Future.Bible podcast, where you'll hear profiles of individuals and Bible-inspired organizations making a difference in the digital world. In each episode, we'll bring you stories of innovation, advancement, and real-life change. Are you ready? Let's get to today's episode. Hey friends, this is Kenny Jang with the Future.Bible podcast. Thank you for joining us once again as we make a journey across the interwebs, meeting innovators and peers with uh, people who are really interested in furthering scripture engagement, pulling together innovation techniques, technology, and other means to really further the game. Uh, Today, we've got a really interesting interview here with two gentlemen here. Um, I'm excited to sit down and actually learn more about their venture and share some of the stuff that they've been doing um, along the lines of scripture engagement for churches and communities. Uh, the resources these guys have uh, look phenomenal. And so let's get right down to it. Uh, welcome to the show, gentlemen, Greg and Rob. Thank you, Kenny. Good to be with you today. Great to be here. So um, you guys are with a venture called um, Harmony.Bible. And actually, I just want to call out the fact this is one of our favorites, that you're using a new gtld.bible. Um, so kudos to you. You're one of our favorites. <laughs> um, so Harmony.Bible, why don't you, um, before we get to the actual venture and what you are doing in terms of resources, tell us a little bit about your backgrounds and um, who you are. So maybe, Rob, if you can start, just let us know um, just a little background of what your experience is and how you got to Harmony. Well, I got to Harmony by seeing some materials that Greg had put together uh, in some of his work on um, spiritual gifts and how to enable those within the life of the church because there's a glass ceiling that usually takes place with with asking the question and people have been through like four five six seven different questionnaires on spiritual gifts and how do you how do you make that work and that's that's a very difficult place for people so I was looking for materials and helps and I saw some of the stuff and I emailed him out um, and then we, we we got started that way um, I actually got started with something that got absorbed by American Bible Society uh, many years ago called Houses of Worship out of Pittsburgh. And they were doing some work on how to uh, engage small churches. And so they asked me to do some, like uh, every two weeks, a, uh, a little blurb on, on my experiences with the church. And I've been involved with um, small parishes for a long time in my ministry. I've been doing that for 30 years or so. And uh, now I'm doing interim ministries, trying to help uh, churches get from one pastor, uh, the end of one pastorate to the next with a sense of expectation. And so that's been putting a lot of my own spiritual gifts and talents and, and things, skills and love experience into that. And one of the things that I've seen the need for, of course, is the development of leadership for of small yes. groups. And so as, as, uh, as Greg and I were talking about things in the beginning, uh, this led very naturally into our discussion about that. And so I was really excited about moving into helping other people just listen in on some of the experience that we've got and how that can be helpful to them as they develop their groups. So good, so good, Rob. What about you, Greg? How did you come to this idea and venture and tell us the genesis of it? Yeah, well, um... If I turn back the clock a long way, I was in marketing and I left marketing out of the Silicon Valley uh, technology world back in the 80s. So, I mean, this is early stuff, right? Um, we were still building computers, laptops. And 80, that's, I, that's pre, pre-iPhone, right? It's like, oh yeah. Who remembers we, we, those days? That's <laughs> right. It was, um, it was something else. And I left that to go into ministry. Um, when I stepped into ministry, I found my love. I just really enjoyed, uh, particularly I focused with youth students, uh, and with that you get involved with young adults and adults of all ages that are also working with the students. And um, so as I jumped into that, I was actually doing a little bit of transition work for a church that had really had a lot of churn. And from there, I stepped into a ministry with Young Life. Um, as I was in Young Life, uh, we're trying to communicate the gospel to people who aren't engaged in churches, right? And who aren't even there, uh, who are disinterested, 
whatever their story might be, right? But we're in their world and we're trying to communicate the gospel out. And in Young Life's way, we communicate the gospel through stories and trying to get right, again, focused in the gospel and yeah. then, you know, communicate the rest of the gospel story of Old and New Testament and relevant to today. So that brought me into the harmony of the gospels years ago, trying to help disciple students into that. That helped me meet years later, uh, some folks from Sun Life. Sun Life is a ministry many may be familiar with. Yeah. And, um, and so we kind of crossed paths back and forth over the years. I kept you doing what I was doing, uh, both and migrated from youth ministry over into adult ministry, discipleship ministry within churches, small group ministry, launching many, many, and then working ecumenically really across different denominational lines. Um, in all of that, I never produced anything and I kept buying materials. And so I thought, Jiminy, after one church reached about 3,000 members, you know, that's a lot of small group material, yeah. a lot of expense. And I thought, this is silly. We need to just get people focused in on the Gospels and allow people the opportunity to explore that and develop that. I wanted to create a platform that allowed for collaboration of pastors, uh, small group leaders, uh, discipling individuals, youth pastors, missionaries, to co-create something together and have it in an open source, creative commons kind of platform that we could all work together and do. And so that's the genesis of it, which really then launched in 2014 when I found myself at the end of another ministry term. And I said, that's it. Uh, I'm going to focus myself on this and some other business ventures that I'm engaged in. And um, that, so that's, that brings us up to today. Wow. Yeah, I can't imagine. I wonder what the number is on how much churches spend commercially buying small group curriculum um, over and over again, year after year after year, right? Yep. Year after year after year and finding it on the shelf when you go into those churches and they've been purchasing, it's been sitting there not being used anymore. As yeah. Well. yeah, I mean, that's just the church library. Then you have members who are buying, you know, the book for seven to 12 bucks yes. every seven to 12 weeks. Right. And it's just a lot of expense. And I just thought this really, this really isn't necessary. We're trying to get people into the word, right. And study. And if we can hone it in, uh, the other part of what we want is to, to mature believers, right? We want believers becoming disciplers, not just, you know, the, not, the discipled is doesn't always <laughs> discipled, right? They become disciplers in one way or another with whatever expression of ministry and gifts that they have. So they wow. need to be equipped to do that. And that's, okay. that's really where we're going. Okay. So this, there's so much goodness here. Um, just, okay. So uh, let's start. I almost have, there's so many different paths I can go down. Let's start with just the harmony of the gospels. It's not everyone listening in today might understand that term. I remember in seminary, um, you know, Har Harmony of the Gospels, Blue Letter Bible, all those references were, you know, so why don't you start there? Give us a, a cookie, um, a fortune cookie type of uh, answer. What is the Harmony of the of Gospels that you're talking about? Uh, all four Gospels lined up essentially side by side, trying to find the white space and the commonality of them as the story progresses from the beginning of Christ's uh, life and, and, and his uh the beginning of John, we would put at, at the beginning there, towards his ascension and uh, resurrection experiences. And so why is that type of lens so important for discipleship making, or disciple making or studying of the Bible, especially for new believers? Rob, you want to tackle that? <laughs> nope. Uh, you know, what happens is uh, often people will say, well, I read that in that part of the Bible, but I don't get that in this part of the Bible. Do we, have, do we have the same Bible, you know? And what we find here is that we look through uh, the various parts of the story of Jesus and, and how the Holy Spirit worked in the gospelers to be able to present the things that they were being led to present to us as those are, those are represented the opportunity to talk about the details, the differences between those, which sometimes show up, allows us to be able to have the conversation with people that might not otherwise be happen. And, uh, and then pull those together uh, in out of a sermon kind of format into discussion format uh, provides 
a great amount of, of interest in people's, their own interest in the story itself. Why is that there that way, which of course is the curiosity that we're looking for to be able to help people and helping the small group leaders understand how to make use of those and facilitate the discussion. Uh, it's really can be a very, very bountiful, profound kind of way of dis discussing the issues that Jesus represents in the gospel. I remember um, having a small group where we used community Bible experience, mm -hmm. um, that version of the Bible. And we had two people that have never read the Bible ever before. And it was just curious. It's a little humorous where we read the first gospel and then the next meeting is the second gospel. And they're like, didn't we read this already? Is this the same person or is this the same? All right. And the third one, what? And then by the fourth one, it's like, you Christians are crazy. What's going on? <laughs> right. And because they don't even line up. And um, it's, I think it's lost on us sometimes, especially people who have been in the church for so long that um, the lens of someone who's learning, to, growing at the very beginning, especially, or many, many Christians who haven't had that much discipleship in our churches today um, need some sort of guidance or track like like the harmony that oh, you guys are presenting. I, I tell you, Kenny, for years, you know, I can't tell you how many people I've met who said, oh, I started reading the Bible, right? And I started where? The beginning. <laughs> Genesis in the beginning, right? And, right. The, you know, if they make it through Genesis, yeah. then they quickly lose track and they get so confused. Other people join up a church and the Bible study that's going on is in the midst of, uh, you know, Judges or in Ruth yeah. or whatever it might be, right? <laughs> And they're trying to understand Old Testament law in modern day, right? And yep. so th this is the other reason why I always say to people, start just start in the Gospels. And my encouragement to you, and I'm going to make it for free, the encouragement to you is do it in the harmony of the Gospels because you'll get the, the breadth of understanding and, and the communication desire, right? The gospelers desire and why they were communicating what they were communicating to their audiences. But you're going to get the whole story of the gospel through the lens of the four gospelers, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then you can look backwards towards the Old Testament and the Old Testament laws and the Old Testament customs will start to make sense. And as well in the epistles, and everything that's there, whether it's Paul or whether it's James, right, are going to start making sense to you, Timothy, right, are going to start making sense to you. And then you'll start seeing the diversity and why we can respect the diversity. That's, that's great. Now, let's look, talk literally about your offering. Can you share with us the format or, um, you know, you've got a couple different ways to engage, but it looks that it looks like it's very organized. Can you share with our listeners here today um, what what to expect when they engage with Harmony Bible? Yeah. So what I what I want people to do is I want them to register. Um, I, I want that whether that be the discipler, the one leading the small group, or the pastor leading that uh, Sunday morning discussion group, or whatever, however, whatever format it is that you're going to tackle the harmony of the gospels, even as an individual or a missioner, right, who's out there. I'd like you to register. That's easy. It's free. You just register. And then in the midst of that, you're telling me how many copies I will provide you a PDF version that I have allowance for uh, through my uh, agreements that I've already made with Harper One, right? yeah. Harper One and Collins to provide a, a PDF version of this. But what I found quickly was that the book itself, um, it, while it's wonderful, is really difficult because it, um, the book meaning, this is Thomas and Gundry's, uh, which is the classic one here. There's a number of different versions out there. Um, the book is hard because it's bound and you're trying to add things into it, maps and other, other resources and all that kind of stuff. So the next part that you have registered or not is you have the whole chronology of the harmony of the gospels on our website. And with that, then every page as it's formatted today, every page we've put in, um, it's a WordPress backend and every page has a plugin that allows you to print this page as a PDF. So you really don't even have to do it that way. You can do it through the website and just print a certain passage segment that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Then we want you to begin right from the very beginning of the Gospels and just go to um, 
get, go to phase one, section one, and begin. And what we do is through the weekly study, we have a recommended outline of how, how many sections you should be reading, studying that week. Because some weeks are really intense, yes. some, weeks are, some weeks are short, right? And uh, based out of small group experience, we know about the dialogue time that it's going to take to process the content that's in there. And we want it to be a meaningful experience for the small group leader and their, and their members. Yeah. yeah. And it takes about, I, there's, I think there's five or six phases, right? And the, the first phase I think takes about 14 or 15 weeks. That's right. Yeah. So it's, it, it, the whole thing all together, we, we broke phase five into four parts. Um, part of that um, is strategic in the element that there is a progression as we see through the harmony of the Gospels. Yeah. The other part is technologically. I'll just confess there was the other part of that, which was WordPress couldn't handle the volume of scripture <laughs> that's in phase five. <laughs> so we, we, we broke the WordPress system as we were designing the HTML and, um, and that was that. Um, it, it kind of culminated in the in the the two things coming together and really working well. The whole. But it's really, I mean, it's all laid out nicely visually. Columns, notes. I mean, it literally is a easy to read index that anybody, any church leader, can go in and within the first session of going to this uh, to the site, you can actually start to print something out and get going. Right? It's just yeah. meant to. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing, Kenny. Is any any registered person, right, in a, as a WordPress platform, any registered person can then make comments. And what we want to do is we want to see, our, our next growth stage here is that we really want to see comments and people becoming commentators. Uh, we, we, yes, you can take five years and produce a new printed version of the Harmony of the Gospels, and we could do that. Uh, but the, I think it's much more important to have a living, active, commentary going on by people who are studying and engaged Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Um, and tell us a little bit about Harmony Radio. What's going on there? Okay. <laughs> right now we're on a little bit of a, of a respite. We're, we're taking a break due to some of my other business engagements. And uh, that, that put us on a little hold. We've got the last segment of uh, phase 5D to go through. And then will continue on. Harmony Bible Radio was designed to train the trainers, not okay. designed to focus in on the study itself. I wanted kind of a, what was that old um, Hatton Robinson radio Bible class, right? Yes. That's really what I wanted was an experience of three to five people online chatting through each segment and, um, and carrying on. Um, as it's turned out, Rob has been the faithful partner through this portion. And I think one of the next stages we're going to go through is this kind of quick 15-minute podcast. And we'll develop those as in the next stage of things. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, um, you know, you've got a bunch of different resources. You're actually inviting other ministry leaders to participate Um can you share, I guess, what is the ideal type of person in terms of ministry? Does, is it just the pastor? Is it a small group leader, an elder? Who, who is that person that you, who's the sweet spot of the person that you want to draw in in terms of participation? Rob, you want to tackle that? The sweet spot probably is that uh, the small group leader who's been recognized and involved in the life of a, of a community um, whatever that community might be, but we we um, we tend to, to tackle each of these uh, discussions of ours um, with taking the, the very f a person who is uh, just brand new to the whole concept of wanting to do lead a Bible study altogether, mm. and and that's and so that can be a little bit limiting in the sense of how we jump right in, but it allows us also to kind of get warmed up to the situation and the issue as well. But by the time we're 15 minutes in, we're talking about fairly deep uh, issues and, and matters that can be raised within the, the group. We'll take some time uh, as the questions formulate in our minds as we go through our discussion about uh, what would be helpful for the small group leader at this moment in the discussion about this particular thing. 
from our ba from our background from our experience, and uh, so that so we're we're adding in the kinds of things that would be leadership development stuff as we're talking, but then we're talking about the um, the scripture itself. Of course, that's kind of the the heart of the whole thing. So it's possible for a person who has no small group whatsoever to, to just listen in and get a feel for what's happening. Uh, yeah. Pastors could be involved with this because um, from my perspective and, and much of Greg's perspective as well, we're going to be putting material in there that they could be used for next Sunday sermon, <laughs> yes. uh, you know, as well. Uh, it just takes a little while to wade through that, you know, to be able to, to get into it. But I would see where uh, the interaction could happen with a person who really wants to get a small group going within a community and then they can access both Greg and I or else whoever else is we're, we're in, uh, in fellowship here with, um, to associate it with, to be able to help uh, that group grow and have a plan of action and help that pastor who might also want to be. I don't see um, the sweet spot, like you mentioned. I, I want to see the sweet spot as being a person who is doing this kind of work with a small group fully in uh, conjunction with their pastor. In the, or it could be a pastor himself who's doing this at work, but we don't want to see this as being as, as small groups that are being uh, engendered off of a, a fellowship and accountability kind of situation as well. So that, that's, that's right. a sweet spot for me. Now, for the actual person who's potentially you know, ready to engage and look at this as a, a source of curriculum to, to lead their study, um, can you set up some expectations? Because... Um, I, I feel like we've been almost um, commercially molded in the North American church to understand what small group or Bible study really should be or is, right? It's, it's, it's become almost like uh, Bible McNuggets, right? Like fill in the blank. There's one right answer. Everyone goes around. You, you, everyone stays silent until the person who right chimes in, right? There, <laughs> Right, the, we've almost been trained um, to be to be reduced down to that. Can you contrast that with um, right? Because there's all the small group materials that and small group leadership resources, all the stuff that has flourished commercially over the last several decades. Um, what yeah. makes the format valuable from that perspective? The leader who really wants to see life-serving growth in their community. Can you share some yeah. expectations of what the difference is? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the day of uh, fill-in-the-blank Bible <laughs> study, small group leader materials is really numbered, right? We've, we've, we're not living in an era where we have uneducated, uninformed people. Right. Uh, now, you know, I think in, uh, I'll say, you know, I, I would almost imagine universally around the globe, right? That, that's the case. And people are, even, even people who are uneducated about the gospel, right, who have never had any interaction with it, they have a, they have a first interaction with it. So um, what we want is for the emotive and the intellectual to come together, right, through that. So the questions that we've, that we've created in each segment, in each week's study, are designed to uh, elicit out and bind together, bring a group together and help them express themselves. And the real skill for the small group leader is to learn how to curb things when it's out of alignment with scripture, right? Um, I'll say out of alignment with your, with your denominational or your congregational um, perspective on things because there's going to be diversity in that, even from what we publish, which is again, one of those reasons why we, want, we didn't want to create a set of defined commentary. Mm -hmm. We wanted to invite broader commentary because Kenny, you have insights that I don't have, right? And so we want those to come together. But the same thing is when you're leading a small group, how many times have you had an aha moment from <laughs> one of the members in your group? Right, and you just go, wow! I hadn't thought of that, because they have a different life experience, and so that that journey uh, together is part of it, right? Jesus didn't start with you know a script, 
uh, he had he was the script right but he didn't have a script yeah. that went along with him and said hey this is what we're going to do so <laughs> we're following the life of christ and that becomes our script as we're trying to emerge and develop and emerge ourselves as spiritual disciples wow well i think this is enough for anybody who's listening to what their appetite enough to head over to harmony that bible and really check out the resources. Um, it is very encouraging, especially the way, I just think the structure and the way you guys laid it out um, is just inviting. You're, you're removing a lot of the friction for someone who's trying to lead a group or try to find resources yeah. um, that introduces people to the Gospels. Um, Thank you, Jenny. Again, can I, can I jump in on one, one other part here? And you can fit sure. it in if you like. <laughs> but we're going to go through some other development as, as the, the next phase goes through. A, we need to finish up in our current 60-minute yes. uh, phase 5D. In addition to that, um, one of our other ministry partners um, is a gentleman from uh, Campus Crusade. Uh, he's a uh, crew, right? And um, Simon is out in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Simon came and said, Greg, we need to have this thing in... German, but there is no German, right? And, and while we created a plugin or at, put in the plugin for language transition, translation, it's, it's really not sufficient, right? It's, right. Not, um, it's not the gospel. So it's, it's a Google translation of the gospel, right? So what we'd really like to see is get away from copyrights. We want to have Wycliffe people, other missionary translators join in. What Simon has been able to do is he's actually taken the back end, remapped it all, so that now we're uh, now we're prepared to go language by language with the CSV file of any language and upload it into that format, and then translate the whole gospel, have the whole gospel, uh, harmony of the gospel, repathed with white space and everything back into whatever language. So our next stage is to go there. I think another thing that we're gonna aim for um, in the next two years is I'd like to launch a whole new radio station, uh, mm -hmm. podcast station, 24 seven, multi-language. I think it's really important um, to have people who are doing 15 minute, hour long segments, Bible study segments, carrying on and I think it's a new era with technologies that are out there to create that sort of thing. I think we're going to redevelop the website itself as we move over to that new language-based platform. Um, and I'm looking for partners, people who are techies who love to dig in and do something collaboratively and um, see where we go with this. Um, and again, uh, I just want to point out to people listening in today, they already have some really cool resources they have developed. It's not just future forward. Um, I love the map and the timeline. I mean, just the stuff that you have on the site is something that I think every church leader at least needs to be aware of. So they have these tools at their fingertips at some point in this next ministry season. Um, so I would, I would invite everybody to check out the website. Um, as we close this out, I, one of the questions that I have for you guys is um, we, we typically ask some of our uh, guests here, if we, if you gave you a magic wand and budget, technology, all those pieces of friction are removed. In terms of scripture engagement, what would be just one dream that you would have that you'd be able to accomplish with that magic wand? What's one thing in terms of scripture engagement that you would just love to see solved or accomplished in terms of resources and tools out there? Hmm. Okay, Rob, you first. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> It's like ordering at the restaurant when you're not ready and you just you defer to yeah. your guests, right? Well, okay. So the best scenario is that a person converts to Christ and immediately becomes a mature Christian. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we wouldn't have to worry about the rest of this stuff, right? Yes. But, uh, you know, I, what I, would, I think if you could manage to get uh, the office of teacher and the gift of teacher which we'd, we're not trying to uh, remove that from with this particular format. You have that in conjunction with your small groups and there's a living interaction between teaching and discussion and growth and 
and evangelism that goes all in one hand. That's the picture. I don't know how you would ever yeah. you know, removing those silos that. and those walls between all those activities, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Free flowing. That's a great one, um, Greg. What about you? Well, I'd like to see um, greater ecumenical uh, communication, uh-huh. right, and um, and collaboration, right. And it's not just ecumenical. I mean, you can put two churches of the same denomination in the same town, <laughs> and we need to see more collaboration. Right? How that true is that in today's world? Free-spirited, offer, right? Freely you've received, freely give. Yes. That's at the heart of what Harmony Bible is. Yeah, That's great. Great sentiments and great ideas. Um, if someone was listening into a conversation and they want to get in touch with you directly, what is the best way that they could do that for each of you? Each of us have an email uh, using the dot .bible domain. It's greg at dot .bible, uh, at harmony dot .bible, or rob right. at harmony dot .bible. Right. Perfect. Uh, well, I appreciate you guys stopping in and sharing with us a little bit about your venture. I know that you guys are in roll-up-the-sleeves mode and really just trying to churn out these resources for the church. Thank you so much. The, the project that you've uh, accomplished so far is a gift to the kingdom we're really looking forward to seeing all the developments as they go along. And if, you, if it'd be okay, we'd love to revisit with you periodically to see what other types of resources that you guys unveil periodically. I like that, Kenny. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for listening in. And if you are part of our audience, we'd love for you to help us share this resource with other church leaders. The best way to do that is leave a review on iTunes and share this episode on your social media accounts and email your pastor or friends. Let's spread the word about harmony.bible and the work that these guys are doing to push our, our congregations and our whole church forward. Um, and we really appreciate you listening in today. We'd love for your feedback, comments on this particular episode, as well as ideas and introductions to guests for future ones. Um, I'm Kenny Jang for future.bible. Next week, we're going to have DJ Chuang uh, join us back in the co-host seat. But uh, until then, we really hope that you have an engaging time with the scriptures. And remember, that starts with you. Thanks for joining us. And we'll catch you here next week on future.bible. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed today's session, please help us share this podcast with your friends, colleagues, and family members. You can do that by leaving a review on iTunes or by sharing our website, www.future.bible, with your network. Don't forget to join us next week for the next episode of the Future.Bible podcast.